The mobile filmmaking world just got a new app. The designers and developers over at Halide have been teasing this new app called Kino for the past couple of months and I've been so excited to get my hands on it and I've actually been using it for the past handful of days. And in this video, I wanna talk about who's it for, who's it not for, is it better than the Blackmagic Camera app? Does it even compare or is it even trying to? Let's talk about it. Real quick, I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor and that is Bscript, a long time good friend of this channel. If you wanna up your filmmaking game with some amazing lenses, cages. If you need any further proof that Bscript is one of the best mobile filmmaking gear accessory companies you can go for, look no further than Apple themselves. While finding BTS footage from all their events and commercials can definitely be hard, most of the time you will see a Bscript cage or product somewhere in there. And that is because these things are absolute tanks. What you're seeing right here is my favorite minimalist setup. We have, of course, the Beast Cage for iPhone 15 Pro Max. You basically get it for the specific iPhone you have. Uh, and my two favorite lenses is this one is the Kenko 0.75X wide angle. So I can use my main sensor, but get a little bit wider. I also love the 1.7X teleconversion. As we're gonna talk about in a couple minutes, adding things like NDs or different type of physical lenses can have major benefits compared to just changing the lenses on your phone. Although that's very convenient and works most of the time, if you want true pro quality, you can add some physical glass in front of it. This newer handle is also really nice because it can switch between horizontal setups and vertical very fast. So if you wanna check out latest deals and products from Bscript, check out the top link in the description below. And thanks so much for them for sponsoring this video. And in this video, I wanna give you my pros, cons, who's it for, what do I think it's missing, and just my honest thoughts about it. Now I should also mention the price of this. Now keep in mind that this is not a bonsai billion dollar company like Apple or Blackmagic. So they don't really have the ability to release an app for completely free. And so at full price, it's gonna cost $19.99, one time, no subscription, and as far as I can tell, no in-app purchases. But if you pick it up this week, you can get it 50% off for $9.99. While I don't think a $20 price tag is bad for a one-time buy, you may see by the end of this video that $9.99 is a no-brainer price if it's for you. So getting to the actual interface here, when I first opened it up, I was like, okay, ultra minimal. It looks very basic. And at first I didn't know how to feel about it because nowadays, anytime a new video filmmaking app comes out, I approach it with, how's it compared to the Blackmagic camera app? So what's important to talk about in this moment is the mentality of this app and how they're actually positioning it in the app space. They were incredibly clear with me, and I think incredibly clear with their marketing, that this is not intended to be on necessarily the same level as the Blackmagic Camera app. Because the Blackmagic Camera app is intended for someone like me who is going to use my phone camera app in the same way that I would use a full-on cinema camera. In fact, I used the phone recently on a six or seven figure TV show, mostly shooting behind the scenes, but there were moments where I could rig it up and it could be a C or D camera just kind of getting a creative angle that would be way too complicated to rig up the Airy 35s that we were shooting on. But I could still finesse every bit of control the same way that I can use any other cinema camera. This is not trying to be that. The way they've positioned this app is the ability to get cinematic video quickly and efficiently and for everyone. So we have a basic interface. We can see in the top left, we have our audio meters. We have an auto button below that. Top right, we get a little bit of camera data. Below our preview screen, we have our lens switching. We have AF or manual focus if we want. We have one little arrow, which is gonna give us kind of some advanced features, we can turn on a waveform, we can turn off stabilization or off. There is no like standard cinematic extreme state, it's just on or off stabilization. We got some grids with a beautifully designed level system. We can indeed switch to the front camera, which is pretty cool. And we have access to our settings and there's not a ton going on in here. There's some great learning material. Uh, we can talk about the grades, which we're of course, we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. Recording quality, I do love that they included shutter speed and shutter angle. I'm an angle type of guy. I'm always trying to hit that 180 degree angle. And so this makes it a lot easier. Auto motion is one of the standout features we're gonna talk about in a second. But I do like the locking feature for both white balance and exposure. If you turn these on, as soon as you hit record, whatever white balance and exposure settings you have set, even in automatic, 
it's going to lock that, meaning it's not gonna change while you're recording. Now, if you want a more in-depth walkthrough of every component of this app, I'm currently working on filming a in-depth guide to add to my iPhone filmmaking guide, which also includes Filmic Pro, the Beast Cam app, and of course, the Blackmagic Camera app. So all these apps will be inside of my iPhone filmmaking guide. If you're interested in that, you can check it out in the link in the description and use the code to get an extra little discount on that. So there's really three components of this app that kind of stand out to me beyond just a, hey, this is a extremely basic video filmmaking app. First up, we have these preset grades. Now they've actually worked with some really cool creators and companies to create these. For example, Tyler Stallman, he actually has a LUT pack. They took one from that LUT pack called Glow Strup, and these essentially are just instant grades to add on top of Apple log footage. Now, by default, if you do download this app and you're not seeing all of these presets, you need to make sure that you are in Apple Log. So if I go back to my previous screen, tap in the top right, you can see some different presets here for uh, codecs, resolutions, and frame rates. If you tap on custom, you can go in and uh, choose all these. But if I just go to regular sRGB mode, and now I'm just kind of in the standard Apple color space, if I go into presets, I'm only gonna see the ones that are kind of tweaked and supported to this specific color profile. So to get everything, and honestly, in my opinion, you should, if you have a 15 Pro or Pro Max, you should never not be shooting an Apple Log. So I can go into Apple Log here and it will switch over. And now I can see all of the various different uh, presets for that. And of course they've been tweaked to the Apple Log profile. So if you just want a regular neutral kind of Rec. 709 conversion, you can add that. Uh, this Sando glow strup. Again, these are all created by different people. And if we actually go into the settings and go under about featuring grades by, and these are all the different people who uh, created some of the presets in there. Of course, in addition to Halide's own presets that they've made. So shout out to all these creators, super cool. But don't worry, you can also import your own LUTs. So if we go into settings, grades, you can do import from files and add your own uh, cube files in there. And while that specifically isn't unique, again, you can do that in the Blackmagic Camera app, but what you can't do in the Blackmagic Camera app is apply a grade after the fact. So if I wanted to shoot in Tyler Stallman's glow strip here and I wanted to just save it as I'm picturing it, so bake the LUT into the video file, I would just hit instant grade at the top, I'd hit apply and as I hit record and save the clip, if I do a clip right here and just record this, if I then go to the library or my photos app, I can see that clip just automatically has the grade in it. But what I can also do, which is what I do most of the time, is I turn instant grade off. You know, I'm viewing whatever my preview LUT is. I hit apply, uh, and now, you know, I record it. I see my cool little recording interface. I really like that red ring stripe around everything. That looks super cool. And now when I go to view it, it's just a log profile. So I can send it to my computer and grade it, but I can also go in here and apply one of these LUTs. Or I can scroll back in a log clip from way before you know this app ever was released, because this is actually the first app that I've seen that you can actually take a log clip like this and I can go through all these cool little previews. Honestly, I just, I really do like this Glowstrap app. And I can hit apply and then it's going to export that video, save it into my photos with that applied to it. Or again, any other LUT that I import. So I'm so excited to see this feature. Now the other thing is when it comes to exposure and we can see that uh, green auto at the top. I can tap on that and I can change to manual mode. And I do get a couple shutter angles because that's what I chose or you get shutter speed options. And again, I'm always chilling at 180 unless you know I'm going for some sort of stylistic choice where I switch it up. And then at the bottom, you just have ISO. So it's very fast to adjust your exposure. Now you don't, unfortunately get any sort of white balance control. And I've struggled with mentioning this as a con or not necessarily a pro, just kind of like aligned with the mentality of this app. Again, this is meant for everyone to get cinematic images quickly. And if you are constantly in control of your white balance, then that's going to be another step that is going to slow you down. 
And so this is definitely an app where I can grab and I can keep my shutter angle at 180 and then I just have one slider similar to my, you know, a generic auto exposure slider and I can just adjust my ISO based off that. Or if I want these to be set, then I plug this whole thing in to a beast cage system and add an ND. Now, if I go back to auto mode, uh, I can swipe down from the top and I get a nice little EV counter here. And of course I can lock this in. So if I always want it to be, you know, roughly half a stop underexposed, I'm auto, but slightly under. If I hand my phone to Michelle and say, just get a good exposure, all she has to do is slide this around until she sees it light up green. And that's gonna tell her that it's a good exposure. I Meaning when I go to grade this later, I'm gonna have the data that I need to make this the shot that I want it to be. And that by itself is very powerful. And that's also what they call this auto motion feature. So again, if we go back to settings and go to video record, we can see auto motion, which adjusts exposures to create cinematic motion. So what this is attempting is it's always gonna try to give you a 180 degree shutter angle. Now, it, what this means is if you're outside and it's crazy bright and you have your ISO as low as you can, again, that's where you need to add a ND in front of the lens to get proper exposure, but it's teaching a proper cinematic sort of and uh, filmmaking 101 camera exposure triangle lesson without you having to do a whole lot. And that's, I think, is really powerful. So while us pros could be potentially annoyed at you know the lack of features, I actually think this is very powerful. And the third and final thing that I think this makes a truly fantastically designed and well thought out app is all of the automated things that happen in the background, similar to the auto motion, but also when it comes to external accessories. For example, I knew one of the top questions I had and what people would ask is external microphones. Are they supported? And if I take out my Rode Wireless Pro here, we'll see here in a second, a message pop up, microphone change to Wireless Pro RX. If we take a look at the audio meter at the top, we can now see it's receiving audio from here. There's no advanced audio features to mess with. It's just auto audio with whatever's plugged in. And if I do the same thing with a external hard drive, SSDs, a message pops up. Kino would like to write access to this external device, hit allow, external drive connected. Now I'm recording straight to the external drive and I can tell it just by looking at the top right because I had like 30 minutes on my phone of record time, now I have 119. And I can also see USB-C at the bottom left. Again, this is saving you crucial seconds to get the shot you wanna get without having to dive into settings. Now let's focus on the cons. This is a version 1.0, and I think it's valuable to provide some feedback that I found both to you and to Halide so they can come out with improvements, bug fixes, new features, etc. Now I've thought a lot about this con list and I'm going to refrain from just mentioning a bunch of pro features that it's missing. I don't think there's a lot of use in adding all the features that are in like the Blackmagic camera app because then you just have like two of the same app. This is trying to be a different style of app. So I'm not adding things like white balance or advanced audio controls to the con list because I think not having those features was intentional. So here's my actual con list. One is the preview display is not functional in terms of focusing. And that I don't think I've ever seen. And I'd be curious to hear if this was an intentional thing or just something that will be added over time. Because right now I have autofocus turned on as we can see in the bottom left. Uh, and it will just autofocus on whatever I'm aiming at. But let's say I have a foreground object. I can't tap to focus on my hand and I can't tap to focus on the background. It kind of just picks one. So I'd have to go into manual focus if I wanted to do some sort of uh, focus shift from the back to the front. For an app that is going after, you know, speed efficiency and all that, I was kind of surprised to see there's no like focus locking or uh, any sort of, of tap to focus feature. Also switching between the camera lenses. I love the finesse, the touch of that fade in and fade out. I love that way more than just kind of like the jumpiness, but the fade in and fade out is I think 
delayed. Right now it's doing okay. Oh, see, that one took a little bit. If I go to like 0.5, that one was real bad. Yeah, it, it takes a couple seconds in between lenses and just speeding that up, I think should be a major focus point. The other thing to note is unlike the Blackmagic camera app, and a couple others. Once I start recording, I can no longer switch between the lenses. So I, as you can see, I can't tap any of my other lenses right now. And I don't think I can zoom in or out. There's no pinch to zoom or anything like that. So you need to find your focal point and then hit record and that is your focal point for that clip. And before we end this, I do want to just kind of throw out there into the universe a feature that they've hinted at me. I don't really know if I'm allowed to say much about it, but all I will say is that it's the main feature that the Blackmagic Camera app doesn't have that we've all been begging them for. Um, and Halide makes another app called Orion, which allows you to use like an iPad as a monitor for your camera. And well, now they make a video app and the technology exists to have a wireless feature. So you know that feature may be on the horizon. Having an app like this is incredible. It's not a replacement to the Blackmagic camera app and it's not trying to be. But now I have two apps that can live on my home screen. And if I'm in a moment where I just need something super fast, super quick, I'm now going to be opening the Kino video app. And if I have something where I want full creative control, then yeah, I'm going to go to the Blackmagic camera app. And I think both deserve a space on your phone. Let me know what you guys think about the Kino app in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.